on Business Incorporated today. South African rand weakens in early trade as the dollar surges to a new five-week high. Kenyan spill subsidy climbs to 71.17 billion shillings in the first six months of this year. And the Bank of Ghana set to close down Foreign Exchange Bureau over Forex laws. Good afternoon. Welcome to Business Incorporated Live on Channel Television. I'm Ini John Mekwa. Let's begin the show as usual with intra market numbers. We start here in Africa, where we see mostly negative sentiment at intraday. Well, but the week begins in the green for the NGX. We ha can't remember the last time we saw that. Okay, sometime last week in Nigeria, we see that uh, even though it's marginal 0.01, uh, but at least uh, we are positive 49,374 for the uh, South Africa GSE. It's negative almost 1%. At intraday, EGX 30 is in the negative we see there at intraday and not looking good as well as Kenya. Kenya closed Friday straight negative 0.16% at intraday. Well, from there, we move to the Middle East now, where it's mixed sentiment. Uh, Abu Dhabi shed 0.11%, but it's worse for Dubai, almost half a percent down. And then in another region, Saudi Arabia is the only positive at 0.17%, while the Qatar was deep in the red at over 1%. From there, we go to uh, outside uh, Africa or the Middle East to Europe now. Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Vice Chancellor Robert Herbeck arrived in Canada yesterday night on a trip that's meant to secure alternatives to Russian gas supplies. But well, we have Chris Kober now joining us for the details. Hi, Chris. Good afternoon. So tell us exactly uh, what are these two leaders? What is on the agenda? It is energy and how to get more of it uh, from Canada to Germany. An agreement on closer cooperation in the production and transport of hydrogen energy is to be signed. For example, the supply of liquefied natural gas to Germany will, will also be discussed along with the critical minerals used in electric vehicle batteries such as nickel, cobalt, lithium and graphite. On their trip to the second largest country in the world, the two German leaders are accompanied by a large delegation of German business leaders from Volkswagen, BMW, Siemens Energy, or Bayer, for example. Talks with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau are also to focus on political, economic, and military support for Ukraine's battles against Russia and on dealings with China. Now, despite energy issues topping the agenda, Canadian help to alleviate Germany's problems is not around the corner. We have to understand that. The two countries are to accelerate a partnership to develop hydrogen exports from Canada's east coast by as early as 2025. Hydrogen is a zero-carbon fuel best suited for powering large industrial machines, heavy vehicles, and for heating. Also, Germany aims to profit from LNG made in Canada, but that also can't happen immediately as necessary infrastructure at the right locations is missing. Now, Germany and Canada are discussing building LNG terminals on the Canadian Atlantic coast within the next five years. In Germany's quest to wean itself off Russian gas, Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that Canada offered the same abundance of natural resources as Russia with the benefit of being a reliable democracy, as he put it. Yeah, well, uh, uh, Stephen, uh, that's good to know, but 2025 is a long way to go. But what's Canada's position in this? Now, in principle, Canada is on board with all these plans. However, it would rather focus on the production of clean hydrogen rather than providing Germany and the rest of Europe with liquefied natural gas. That's according to the country's natural resources minister. Uh, even though Germany and Canada will be discussing uh, the construction of LNG terminals on the Canadian Atlantic coast, but so far LNG projects are only planned way across the country on Canada's Pacific coast. Shell-led LNG Canada is due to begin operation in 2025 and another project expected 
to be completed uh, in 2027. Now, the cost of transporting gas from the Canadian West to the East Coast would be high, a new pipeline would be needed, and the global shift away from fossil fuels means that the terminal's lifetime would be too short to be profitable uh, unless converted into a hydrogen terminal when gas demand declines. So to avoid stranded assets, the Canadians are pushing the type of energy they feel does have more of a future. Yeah, well, it uh, looks like uh, we have to balance the need for energy and, uh, of course, uh, the need for a uh, clean environment. Let's look at the markets now. How's that? Cautious note. Um, European shares fell on Monday with major regional markets uh, in the red as investors fretted about hawkish signals from European Central Bank policymakers. The ECB must keep raising interest rates even if a recession in Germany is increasingly likely as inflation will stay uncomfortably high through 2023, the head of the Bundesbank, which is Germany's uh, central bank, said in an interview. So the outlook for Europe's biggest economy keeps getting darker, and it shows uh, Germany's blue chips index DAX losing about half a percent uh, in early parts of Monday's trading session. And monetary policy will stay high on investors' agenda with the meeting of central bank heads in the U.S. state of Wyoming uh, starting later this week. There, Fed boss Jerome Powell will deliver a speech that will be followed uh, for an idea about the bank's next moves to combat runaway inflation. All right, Chris, uh, thank you so much. Inflation is a major buzzword in this year, obviously. <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, moving on to other parts of the world now, shares in the Asia-Pacific region were mostly lower today as concerns of aggressive Fed hikes uh, re-emerge, but Chinese markets rose after China cut its benchmark lending rate. The Nikkei 2T5 in Japan paired some losses, but was down 0.47% at 28,794.5, and the Topics Index slipped 0.1% to 1,992.59. The Shanghai Composite was 0.61% higher at 3,277.79, other Shenzhen components gained 1.19% to 12,505.68. Elsewhere in Asia, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index was down 0.6% in the final hour of trade. South Korea's cost we shed 1.21% to 2,462.5, and the Kasdaq lost 2.25% to 795.87. S&P AX200 in Australia dipped 0.95% to end the session at 7,046.9. MCSI's Brodex Index of Asia-Pacific shares outside of Japan was 0.95% lower. And from there, we go to the United States, where U.S. stock features fell following a hold in summer rally. And there we see the Dow Jones features down almost 1%. Expecting a red market at the end of close at the close of trade today at 33,414. SP features more than one percent, even worse than the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq, also more than one percent, 1.37 percent at 13,085.75. Uh, looks like it's going to be a volatile week trading for that market. Anticipation of uh, Chairman Jerome Paul's latest comments on inflation. At the Central Bank's annual Jackson Hole Economic Symposium is driving a lot of markets at this time. And from there, we go to oil and see how that's doing. On uh, oil prices slump today, following investors' concern about aggressive U.S. investors' uh, inv interest rate hike that might weaken the global economy and fuel demand amid a stronger dollar. Brent crude features for October settlement fell 27 cents to uh, $96.45 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude features for September delivery, which is used to expire today, was down 61 cents to $90.16 a barrel. The more active October contract was at $90.09, and that's $9.35 cents. And prices also fell on worries of a slowing fuel demand in China, which is the world's largest importer, and uh, in part also because of a power crunch in the southwest caused by heat wave. On Friday, both Brent and WTI climbed for a third straight day, but fell about 1.5% on the week on a stronger dollar and demand 
concerns. And the metals market now gold hit its lowest level in nearly four weeks today as expectations of more interest rate hikes by the U.S. Federal Reserve fuel a rally in dollar and took to shine or bullion. Spot gold fell 0.7% to 1,735.95 per ounce, hitting its lowest since the 27th of July. It's set to fall for a sixth straight day session after registering a 3% fall last week. U.S. gold features dropped 0.8% to $1,748.50. Meanwhile, the dollar index rose 0.1%, making gold more expensive for buyers holding other currencies. U.S. central bankers would gather this week at their annual retreat in Jackson Hole, while comments from Fed Chair Jerome Powell later on Friday yeah, will be keenly watched. Let's look at Nigeria now and see what's going on now because there are conversations about ease of doing business. Uh, it's still under four. In the face of insecurity, rising inflation and energy costs and the Presidential Enabling Environment Council has proposed a three-year state action on business enabling reforms program with a budget of $750 million dollars. And according to the special advisor to the president, Dr. Jumoke Oduwale, who was on our breakfast show business morning earlier today, the federal government will generate 21 million jobs by 2025 through the $750 million, which is a World Bank-backed program. It's, the program is going to be a $750 million um, uh, program for results over the next three years, from 2023 to 2025. And what that means is that after states have delivered results, they will get a reimbursement. So the disbursement link indicators um, span four areas. Now, the, the, PEP, the SABA intervention itself, the government SABA envelope, is about $2 billion. And that comes from the aggregation of state uh, expenditure budget over the next three years uh, on as captured under the national development plan. So at the federal level and at the at the subnational level, an aggregation of all the the interventions and the areas that we hope to work on over the next three years and deliver results on is two billion dollars. So the SABA program at three at two at seven fifty million dollars comes in at about thirty six percent of that. Right. The four areas, the first area would cover about land registration. So the disbursement linked indicator under that is a single one. It has to do with transparency of the process and the structure of getting COOs uh, at the state levels. And the second area has to do with um, just making sure that we can digitize the economy. So right of way, fiber optic lane, how states can incentivize businesses that will be laying fiber optic uh, cables in the environment just to jumpstart the digital economy, which is of critical importance, as we all know. We didn't just get recognized by the World Bank uh, based on feedback from private sector in Nigeria because of, of optics or because of, of uh, you know, fancy presentations. There's no doubt that we have a lot of challenges in the country right now, but we have to just continue focusing and doing the work. Well, continue focusing and doing the job, and we do hope to see the results of the work. Work in due course. From Nigeria, we will look at South Africa. New gas discoveries and what Total Energies is doing there. That will be a focus and a whole lot more after the break here on Business Incorporated on Channels Television. Yeah, welcome back. You're still watching Business Incorporated live on channels, television. Now, let's go to South Africa, where the country expects Total Energies to submit a production plan within weeks to utilize a prolific offshore gas discovery that will form a key part of increasing investment in the sector. South Africa lacks commercial oil and gas production, leaving it uh, reliant on imports of the field. Its search for domestic resources has encountered unprecedented opposition in recent months 
by communities and activists who have successfully blocked exploration activity by companies including Shell. So let's see what Total Energies can do now as we have our correspondent in South Africa, Brian Pugeni, joining us now to tell us uh, what they expect from this and if those opposition will not block Total Energies. Hi, Brian. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Good to have you, Brian. So um, we've had activists and, and environmentalists blocking companies like Shell before now. Now we have Total Energies working on gas discoveries. What are your expectations there in South Africa from this? Well, like you said earlier, that um, Shell was blocked to explore um, drilling on the on the ocean activists and some community members were very worried about the environment around that area where they wanted to drill and get what they wanted to get um, energy from that area but with shell um, with what's happening with total energies there is hope um, that they, they will reach an agreement with petrol sa at the moment um, which talks still underway but there's confidence that um, they'll be given um, the license to to, to explore the gas, and which is a good thing for the South African economy itself. Um, Total Energy is saying they're going to invest over three billion US dollars from what we we are gathering um, to to explore these gases. So they're saying that that they will be able to. Uh, yeah. Um, to have talks before the 6th of September where this license will expire. So by the 6th of September, we are going to hear more, be, or before then, we're going to hear more on this issue. Um, but they are really confident that it will come through. All right. Uh, so, um, you know, one of, uh, one of the biggest news in the world now, not just in South Africa, is energy costs. You know, so everyone is looking for how to get cheaper energy. Is it through gas? I know South Africa do a lot of coal. So is there any connection? Are there hopes that with the gas discovery and total energies, will this be an alternative or a source of energy for the country? Does it look like it? Well, it does look like an alternative um, energy source because South Africa has been struggling um, with coal energy for the past 13 years or so. We've, we've experienced load shedding in the country because uh, most of the um, electricity is generated through coal and power utility ESCOM has been struggling with that. So independent power producers have been welcome in the country to explore um, energies like gas, wind, solar. So this is a step forward to help already the already struggling ESCOM in the country. So if this deal does pull through and then the gas is started be, uh, starts being explore, um, explored, um, it's a good thing for the economy as well. We might see a reduction in load shedding. We might see better energy um, um, uh, uh, suppliers as well and competition to ESCOM which will which will be good for the economy and and good for people in general um, get having a reliable power source other than just coal which has proven to be a challenge um, for ESCOM and government itself. Mm. I'm talking about low shedding, uh, Brian, just before we let you go. What's the supply like now, electricity? How is it now? Well, at the moment, um, ESCOM has given a notice that they can um, start load shedding at any moment. So anytime we can hear that um, load shedding can start at wow. peak hours, and normally they start load shedding at peak hours, which is around four in the evening to, till midnight. So the energy system is still unstable and um, we're still struggling with that. So we are just waiting and hoping for, for better energy um, <laughs> alternatives at the moment. Yeah, still a very struggling scene that we see there, uh, uh, not very far away from what we have in Nigeria. But Brian, thank you so much. I will wish you the best as uh, you guys look for energy source and alternative. All right, so still in South Africa, Standard Bank South Africa has reported an increase of 33% in head earnings for the six months to end June 2022 compared with a year ago and also noted that earnings of 15.3 billion was a new record for the group. Standard Bank says that growth was driven by an increase in new clients and continued growth in the balance sheet 
off the back of the new deposits and growth in loans and advances. The difference between the interest paid to depositors and interest paid by borrowers increased by 15%, non-interest revenue increased 13%, and return on equity increased to 15.3%. However, management points out that shareholders should not expect the same pace of growth for the full financial year end December 2022, as global growth is expected to slow as CITA financing conditions take effect. Well, just before we leave South Africa, the rand uh, was weak in early trade today, trading at 17 rand and 6 cents against the dollar as the dollar hits a new five-week high after more Federal Reserve officials flagged the likelihood of aggressive interest rate hikes. In the upcoming week, local investors will be looking at July consumer and price inflation, second quarter unemployment figures, and a leading business cycle indicator for clues on the health of the economy. Meanwhile, the rand faces a fresh challenge amid uncertainty about the fate of finance minister who's battling allegations of sexual assault and may be forced to step down just two months ahead of a budget update. And this could likely extend a decline sparked by concerns about Federal Reserve tightening that boosted the dollar. Outside South Africa now, we see that the Bank of Ghana has indicated that it will soon close down license bureau of the change that are not complying with the foreign exchange law. Officials of the central bank made this known after embarking on some field exercises to check the state of compliance with the bureau of the change in the metropolis. Head of financial stability at the central bank, Dr. Joseph France, said that his outfit won't, hes outfit, I beg your pardon, won't hesitate to clamp down activities of foreign Foreign Bureau of Change found culpable and operating illegally. He added that the central bank has begun an investigation into various complaints received regarding some Forex Bureau of Change that are not abiding by the laws governing foreign exchange. There's the belief that actions by some operators have been contributing to speculation in the foreign exchange market, and this is affecting the stability of the CD. Well, economists in Africa have raised their outlook for the continent's inflation rate over the next two years. The findings indicate that countries including Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa and Kenya will see higher inflation than previously forecast this year. Angola is the only nation whose forecast has been lowered. The most notable forecast change for average inflation over the year is Ghana, with a projection raised to 26.6% from 19.1% in the previous survey conducted in May. Inflation in the West African nation accelerated in July to 31.7%, and that's the fastest pace in nine years, in 19 years driven by transport and food prices. The central bank raised rates by 300 basis points to 22% at an emergency meeting it held on the 17th of August. Central banks across sub-Saharan Africa will likely have to remain focused on reining in on price growth in the coming months. And economists are raising inflation forecasts in many regions on key economies. And then we come to Nigeria now, where the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Limited, the NLLG, that's one of the companies undertaking the construction of roads under the, Fed, under the Road Construction Development and Refurbishment Investment Tax Credit Scheme, has received its tax credit certificate from the Federal Inland Revenue for the construction of the Boni Bodo Road, which is in River State. This project would initiate the linking of the island of Boni by road to the rest of the country and is expected to open new opportunities for economic activities. The Road Infrastructure Development and Refurbishment Investment Tax Credit Scheme, also referred to as the Road Infrastructure Tax Credit Scheme, is a public-private partnership scheme signed by the President, President Muhammad Buhari, under Executive Order 007 in January 2019. And it enables the federal government of Nigeria to leverage private sector capital and efficiency for construction, refurbishment and maintenance of critical road infrastructure in the country. NNPC, MTN, Transco Group, Access Bank, GZI Industries are among some of the entities currently participating in the Road Infrastructure Tax Credit Scheme under the Executive Order 007.
And that's a wrap on Business Incorporated. Today is the first one for the week. We still have four more to go. Do stay with us here on Business Incorporated. But for today, I'm Ini John Mekwa. Enjoy the rest of your day.